Hi guys, uh, in this video we will discuss about uh, the evaporative cooling uh, through DPM method or discrete phase method. So you can see the geometry on the screen what I have taken for this simulation. So here this is the air inlet and this would be the air outlet. And uh, in the main course, so there are a few injection points. So this is one injection point, this other injection point. So similarly, these are the injection points which are been placed. So from these injection points, cold water will be injected with 300 degrees, uh, sorry, 300 degrees Kelvin. So water droplets will be injected. So water droplets will be injected from these injection points randomly in a staggered manner. So as a hot air, which is a combination of both water vapor and air, I mean water vapor and nitrogen and oxygen, it's a combination, so it's a species. So a species which has all these species together will be used for our simulation. So when it is going in this direction, so it will divide into different passages and it will come across through this droplets where the heat transfer will occur and some amount of water liquid which is in the format of droplet will start evaporating by taking the heat from the air. So in that way the temperature of the air will be reduced. So I will take if initial temperature for air will be like around 360 Kelvin. So now as it passes through this 300 Kelvin water droplets Obviously, the temperature will drop of those air which is flowing around and the temperature of the water will take that uh, or, the temp or the water will take that heat and it uh, in turn will turn into the vapor. So, the, here the concepts important are species transfer and the other one is the DPM and the next point is the interaction between the species and the DPM. So, I will just throw or shed some light on to the simulation of we need to perform. So, I am using an ANSYS uh, solver for this. So, I will just show you the mesh water used. So, this is simple mesh water used as it is for only for demonstration purpose. So, you can see this is an inlet. You can just turn this in this direction. So, this is an inlet and here this is an outlet. You can see here this is an outlet and these are the different injection points what you can see what I have given. So these are the different injection points, right? So we can just go into the fluid. As mine is academic version, I will have only four cores. What I can use? So I use three solver process, one GPU, and I'm using the species transport. So I'll act with double precision also for the more accurate results. So now here you need to remember uh, the terminology. What is important is the saturation pressure, vaporization temperature, on all those terms. So saturation pressure is the pressure at which a uh, liquid turns into vapor. Now the saturation pressure is a variable with respect to the temperature at which it is present. And vaporization temperature is also variable with respect to the saturation pressure or the pressure that is at that particular point. So now we will just go to models uh, and accurate species. So species transport, right, apply. Okay, and of uh, and the transient simulation with gravity as minus 9.81. You can see that gravity will be in the negative direction to the y. And I'll just on the discrete phase methodology. So it should have an interaction with continuous phase, or else it cannot take the heat from the air. So we need to have an interaction, and this uh, maximum number of steps is the uh, time duration or the amount of time it need to have a tracking for those DPM particles. So you can keep 5000 which will be sufficient for the particle to get tracked. Before that also it will start evaporating due to the high amount of heat that is present in air. So this is a length scale factor that is uh, which signifies the particle to particle distance uh, which is within the cell. So that you can leave it as by default. In the physical models you can act with thermophoretic forces due to the thermal gradient so the particles will start moving and the lift forces 
and you can also activate the stochastic collision and break up. So this will be sufficient for our uh, simulation. And you can go to injection, click on new injection. So we need to create a new injection. Uh, in the new injection, so we'll have a surface injection and we'll have this selected droplet. So our material is water liquid. So it's water liquid will turn into evaporating species of water vapor. Right, and we will try to inject from all those injection one to seven, and we need to uh, use a phase normal direction for our injection. And I'm using a particle size of uh, maybe hundred micrometers. So I'll use a hundred micrometer particle size, and start time and stop time I use uh, one to five seconds. And the velocity I use zero point three, with the mass flow rate as zero ten to power minus eight. And I want to have this injection the randomized start positions. So randomized start positions it means so it will not inject from only single points. So it has an injection with respect to a random points which use the probability distribution table in order to have that uh, randomized points. So that will fluid will take care of uh, those uh, positions. And the physical models. So we are using a triangular spherical and the breakup model I'm using a tap model. And the number of parcels I want to have uh, maybe four parcels uh, with uh, for sorry four particles for each parcels and the streamlines I'll have a four stream set at a stretch for single time step right so I'll click on OK so in the boundary conditions so the inlet velocity is zero right. So I'm just leaving now. I will try to initialize and run only for DPM. So the water vapor fraction I'm trying to initialize 0 0.1 and uh, oxygen as uh, remaining 0 0.9. I'll just uh, activate. So this is for only demonstration purpose, or else we can just change this uh, mixture combination which has only air and uh, water vapor. So I'll do that. So it will be much more easy. So I'll remove this oxygen, I'll remove this nitrogen, and I'll add that air to the term. So okay, change create and close it. Now I'll initialize with uh, 0 0.1, which is water vapor, and remaining 0 0.9 will be air. So I'll initialize and I'll try to run the simulation for five time steps. Oh sorry, for five seconds. So I'll take a time step at 0 0.001 and I'll try to run this simulation so that you will see the droplet distribution. So after the droplet distribution, I'll start activating the air and we'll see how the temperature is reduced and how the heat transfer is occurring between the droplets and the air.
So you can see on the screen I have ran for few time steps. So the, these are the ejection of the particles or the water particles. Now I'll try to give some velocity to the air and with temperature of 360 Kelvin. And the species it is having a 0 0.1 and uh, solution is not present. This apply close. And in the wall, so these are all the ejections, this will escape. And the remaining wall surface uh, will be, I will be giving it as a trap. So any particles come and they will be getting trapped. So that is the meaning of a trap. So I will just apply, close. Now I will run for the uh, remaining time. Before running, I will just create a counter of uh, velocity, how it is looking like. Uh, so these velocities are due to the uh, injections and okay and I'll go to solution animation I'll try to uh, create a seam which will be a combination of both particle as well as the velocity counter and I'll make it as a transfer so this is a velocity counter right uh, so say similarly I'll, I'll just name it as velocity phi save cancel and I'll create another counter for temperature so this is a temperature compute we'll save display close and I'll try to create a particle track for temperature so this is a particle temperature track can just browse down, we'll get particle temperature, select this injection, save display, close this is the temperature of the particles, everything is at 300 because there is no temperature difference between air and uh, uh, particle. But now we have given 360 Kelvin, we'll observe what is a pattern and I'll try to create a new scene which will be a combination of temperature counter and particle track. So I'll give it temperature scene. Right, so save, cancel. So now we have got two scenes. One scene is for temperature, other scene is for velocity. In the both the scenes, we'll have temperature of particles and the temperature of air. The velocity temperature, velocity of particles and velocity of air. So now we'll uh, try to create the animations. So two animations for two scenes. And I'll try to save it for every five time steps. Okay. Also, we need to rename it. So I'll just, maybe I'll give a, uh, Temperature animation. I will give anim. So that is for scene two. Where is scene two? This is temperature. Yes, okay. And for five time steps, five time steps. Okay. Similarly, next one is for velocity scene. Velocity scene. Five time steps. Okay. Now we'll just check what is happening here. Now click done open. So now we will have that uh, counters. So now you can see uh, both static temperature as well as uh, this counter. So the particle temperature is increasing. You clearly observe that. It's not normal anymore. It's changing. And the velocity magnitude is also will get changed. This uh, is due to the counters we are getting this display on to the uh, scenes. So the particle temperature is gradually increasing. So I'll just stop it and show it to you how the counters of the temperature is changed. Now the temperature is 360, you can see this 360, right? So you can 360. And we'll come to the global range. So 360 Kelvin. You can observe that the hot air uh, with 360 Kelvin is entered. And now we can just check the particle counters also. 
the particle tracks so you can just save display you can see particle temperature is not normal anymore so here it is uh, 309 and here the particles are like around 296 something 300 uh, so now you can just see so there are nine particles got trapped it will show for each time step what is happening 26 got trapped 9 got trapped so everything what is getting trapped and everything is given here uh, and you can see this evaporation temperature what is mentioned here you can just go to pa droplet particle water liquid so you can see the evaporation temperature is 284 kelvin so but actually it is not 284 kelvin so it, it, it will be variable with respect to the temperature for uh, demonstration purpose we have taken it as 284 kelvin but it is a variable uh, and with respect to the saturation pressure so obviously it will be a uh, variable with respect to temperature that is given but the average temperature is not given in that way so don't bother uh, so it is only for demonstration purpose uh, so how the particles are getting operated when it is passing through the uh, air so those things have been mentioned here right so and if you want to uh, run the simulation uh, in the further hand also you can just run and check uh, the temperature at outlet also how it is getting decreased and how the particles are getting evaporated so this is kind of phenomena what will happen with respect to the time and uh, so you can just check here so the temperature is 360 and the particles are getting evaporated deposited everything has been happening here so here the 360 still air is flowing so it will take some time for the air to flow from that inlet to the outlet maybe meanwhile i'll just show you the path lengths of the air also how it has been uh, moving uh, here and there so this will be helpful for a post processing so a relative path lines and you can select the entire interior surface and velocities and you just uh, compute save display so you can just uh, check the path lines that are being present inside the A. so you can just check this now if you can click on pulse you can just check the entire distribution of the path lines how are been they distributed from the inlet you can see from the inlet few particles or few path lines coming out of the each uh, passage and remaining is coming out from the last passage of the path passages and how those path lines have been absorbed so hope this video help you in understanding uh, to run a simulation of evaporation of water droplet into water vapor and uh, injection of the particles and post processing section and all this uh, stuff so please i uh, request you all uh, please to subscribe and uh, like and share the video so that uh, it will uh, reach to the maximum number of persons who are interested in these kind of videos and it will also increase me doing more number of videos thank you